Lives and Legends is a series of videos that bring together the stories and recollections of old-time residents. Ladysmith is a unique community that was founded by Colbaron, James Dunsmuir. Many of the buildings were relocated from Wellington and still stand in the heritage downtown. The war years we had, uh, we had uh, blinds we put up in the windows and we had blackout drivers with little slits on your headlights and things like that. We had first aid stations. The waterfront was once a bustling harbor where ships and rail played a major role in the transportation in British Columbia. Artifacts from our industrial past are still visible along our waterfront. So we'll be able to fix all the wood, and we'll come out of all the wood on the Humdurgan, and we hope that we can fix the rotten wood in here, because the men know how to do it, but we could replace that, and then we could have this wonderful building. This is also where oyster farming started, and continues to this day along with fishing. Uh, she's, she was a real fighter, I guess, like I am. If you really believe in something, you're going to work hard to it. And uh, she did. Close to two dozen people, representing key segments of our past, were interviewed by Lady Smith and District Historical Society volunteers. The full-length interviews are available for viewing. Discover what life was like for the early immigrants. Your ancestors just before you, did they come to Canada or were they asked to leave Scotland? <laughs> Breakfast wasn't on the table yet, and he had a heart attack and dropped dead there. Wow, and here he got 150 men waiting to come in for breakfast. To the traditions of indigenous people. Our language is going up another step, another, we're adding more, we got more teachers speaking, so this is where we're going here. And every student in our system gets Halkamitnam. Mining. Forestry. The oyster industry pioneers. Discover a working harbor and the characters that brought it to life. Everybody knew that John wasn't going to do anything without a snoo, so we had to stop for him. But I don't think they stopped for anybody else, but they stopped for John. <laughs> Follow the boom and bust years. The story of Comox logging. Or you see through the night, a line slapped together and there'd just be a shower of sparks go up the cables. You can see that at night time when you're working night shift. I, I remember cables slapping. Yeah, slapping together, yeah. yeah. I loved that uh, night shift logging. That was more fun than everything. <laughs> Bats flying in and out of the lights and uh, owls flying by. and Oh, we had a good time out there. And we went up to Green Mountain and Matt Smiley was the cat driver. And they would actually have to put a cable on the back of the truck and lower them down the hill with a load on because there was no way the brakes on the truck could hold. The shops and the changing downtown. They had lots of bloomers. They had bloomers with with um, wool in them. Yeah. They had woolen bloomers that you could you could buy. Long ones that came down to your knee. <laughs> oh yes, they had a lot of that kind of stuff. Our railway and industrial past hotels, pubs, and the colorful characters that operated them. She hooked a rug for every room in the Traveler's Hotel. And I, and I can believe it I can't do because that. she would have, that would have kept her busy. And then it would have added to the, the ambiance of the hotel. The schools. We were very innocent. Our parents never told us anything. I can remember when in, in high school, some of the what were supposed to be the boys in the know would describe the sexual intercourse. And it wasn't until I was out of high school that I realized they had no idea what they were talking about. In community groups, the people who made a contribution to our community and our country. 
And I kept reading and reading and learning more and more about his role. And then I didn't know how it ended until I got to the end. These are the stories that we share.